Well, for months, Non Investigates has been telling you about how cell phones are being smuggled into prisons and used to commit crimes. It's bizarre. We have proven it that that's happening on a regular basis. One Brevard County woman says that she was actually terrorized by the man who was convicted for raping her after he called her on a smuggled phone from inside the jail. Channel Line's Justin Gray spoke to the head of the FCC who is now looking into the new technology to keep these phones from working inside. I'm the king. I'm gonna get a phone. I'm gonna get a phone anywhere I'm at. That's inmate Joe Fletcher starring in a 45-minute-long Facebook Live from prison, bragging about getting a phone behind the walls of the U.S. Penitentiary in Atlanta. This problem is not abating, and I think we need to take aggressive action to stop it. Today in Washington, the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, Ajit Pai, is bringing together leaders from the wireless industry, prisons, and federal government, looking for a technological solution to contraband phones in prisons. We're talking about a massive influx of these devices, which are very useful for uh, civilians on the outside, but once they get into the prison walls, they can really be a weapon that can be deployed against inmates, guards. Just this week, Channel 9's Darlene Jones showed us how court documents allege some correctional officers in Central Florida make tens of thousands of dollars smuggling in cell phones in bulk, selling them to inmates. I brought a cell phone in. It was just in my pocket. I walked right in with it. Nobody even questioned me. It's not as simple as just jamming the signal. There are concerns over whether that violates federal law and whether that jamming would bleed over to phones outside prison walls. Wireless carriers oppose traditional jamming, but AT&T tells us in a statement that it, quote, stands ready to support technology trials, including managed access, cell detection devices, and precision jammers.